Hello friends, this video on microorganisms friend and foe part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the third classification is protozoa. What are protozoa? These are those organisms which are mostly unicellular. So we cannot say that all of them are unicellular but yes most of them are. However some of them might be multicellular as well. So unicellular that is made up of one cell. So that one cell will perform all the functions in that organism. Some of them are autotrophic while others are heterotrophic. So I already mentioned what is autotrophic and what is heterotrophic. The word hetero means others and the word auto means self. So the autotrophic they will prepare their own food. So they are self dependent. Heterotrophic they will depend on others for their food. Now some of them will be autotrophic while some will be heterotrophic. If you talk about where they live, they prefer moist and aquatic habitats. Now, you see one thing in common. Most of these microorganisms, they prefer warm places. They prefer moist places. That is why you also see that most of the things which spoil, that spoils due to presence of moisture or due to presence of warm temperature. And that is why we all of us have something called as refrigerator in our house. Because inside the refrigerator, the temperature is quite low. So it becomes a little difficult for these kind of microorganisms to grow. And also if you prepare a dish which, which does not contain water, it will last for a longer time when compared to a dish which has water. That's because one of them has moisture which can favor the growth of microorganisms. The other one doesn't have moisture so it inhibit the growth of microorganism. So presence of moisture and a warm temperature they often favor the growth of microbes. Protozoa however can live singly so this is uh, different from bacteria and fungi. So bacteria and fungi they live in colonies that is a lot of them live together but here they live as single so they do not really need a group of organisms to be there. They can exist at, on themselves. Some of the examples of protozoa are amoeba. Amoeba is again unicellular. So here in the picture you can see this is how an amoeba looks like. So this is just one cell. So this cell will do all the required processes like ingestion of food, ejection of food. So everything will be done by this one cell. Next is paramecium. So you see this is how paramecium looks. Again paramecium has the cilia outside their body. So these hair like structures which you see outside they are called cilia and they help the protozoa or the paramecium to move from one place to another. So like we saw that fungi they were immobile but Protozoa, they are all mobile, so they have uh, organs which help them in locomotion. For example, in case of paramecium, they have cilia. If you talk about amoeba, amoeba, they have pseudopodia, which is also known as false feet. So with that, they actually can locomote or they can move from one place to another. Trigonosoma, this is another example of a protozoa, so here you can see. This is uh, these organisms which you see here, they have a flagella at the end. So this flagella will help in their locomotion. So protozoa, they are all mobile and they have specific locomotory organ as well. And now the fourth classification that is algae. What is algae? Now have you ever observed if you go to a pond, uh, not all the ponds, but if, if you have ever come across a pond or a lake which where the surface of the water is not the color of water. Instead, you have a green layer on the surface of the water. It is as if a green carpet has been put on the surface of water. So what is that green carpet? What, what is that green layer made up of? The green layer is actually made up of algae. So it is nothing but growth of algae on the surface of water that forms the green layer. So these algae, they are multicellular. They are you do not have any algae which is made up of one cell. All of them are made up of multiple cells. They prefer mostly aquatic habitats and that is why you will generally see algae wherever moisture is present or wherever water is present. In fact, you would have observed these type of growth of algae even in the walls of your building if it is if it gets damped very easily. Like not in all the buildings of course. Now if you go to some very old building or a very old house, you will often see that the floor or the wall which remains moist most of the time, they show growth of some green 
very small tiny green layer of small plant like structures so they are algae some of the examples of algae are spirogyra eulothrix chlamydomonas so these are some of the examples of algae now the names might be sounding really tough for you but we are not going to get into the details of each of these types of algae that is reserved for your higher classes however there are videos available so if you want to have a I even mean, if you have want to have a detailed understanding of each of these type of algae you can refer the video lessons on biology for the higher classes so with this we have discussed about the about, uh, regarding the four major classes of uh, the microorganism Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.